Welcome to today's webinar, Learning Disabilities, Overcoming Barriers to Success with a Self-Advocacy Model, brought to you by Simple K-12. My name is Lori, and I am here with Dorothy Osterholt and Sophie Lampard-Dennis, and we are so excited that you all were able to take some time out of your day to be here with us. Now, just a little bit about our presenter. Dorothy is an Associate Professor of Education and Founding Faculty Member at Landmark College. She has researched, written, and presented widely in her field of college students with learning disabilities. And Sophie is an Associate Professor of Education at Landmark College as well, where she teaches first-year seminars and Wilson Method reading courses. Now, she's also researched, written, and presented widely in her field of college students with learning disabilities. Ladies, we are so excited to have you here with us today. Thanks so much for joining us. Hi, can you hear us? Your audio sounds great. I'm going to go ahead and pass the screen to you. Okay. Great. All right. Welcome to Landmark College's webinar. Um, since there will be two of us presenting this material, we did want to take a minute to introduce ourselves to all of you. I'm Sophie. I'm on the left side of your screen there. Um, and uh, as our facilitator mentioned, I'm wrapping up my 18th year here at Landmark, where I teach in the education department, mainly with first year students. Um, but I'm also a Wilson certified reading specialist. So maybe there are a few of you out there in the crowd who also do Wilson work. Um, and I do run a study abroad course during our winter term here. Hi, I'm Dottie. I work at Landmark and have been here for 33 years. I'm currently teaching in the education department, primarily working with first semester students and teaching first year seminar courses. I also teach various other education classes within our four year program. So you will hear both of us talking throughout the next 30 minutes and we are not going to introduce ourselves each time we speak, but we thought we'd give you a sense of who we are and what we sound like. Um, and Dottie's actually going to start us off with the first slide. So I'd like to go through the overview of our presentation so you have a landscape of what we're Hi, going to be you. talking about. I apologize yes. for interrupting. Um, I just had a message come in that um, someone cannot see your screen. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just pull the screen back here really quickly and then pass it to you again and we'll see how that works. Okay. All right. Let me go ahead and I just pulled the screen back and now I'll go ahead and pass it to you again so you should see that pop up. Okay, we've we've done that. Okay. And um, can everyone out there see the presenter screen at this time? Okay, great. Looks like we're good to go. Okay, great. So um, we just introduced ourselves. So for those of you who may not have had a, um, an image of this, here we are. Sophie on the left, Dottie on the right, and Dottie's going to take us through the overview of our, our next three or so minutes. Okay, so we're going to start off with supporting struggling students and looking at student behavior and language. Um, moving then to fostering self-awareness, assessing behavior, using frameworks of the four domains of learning, um, and reframing self-advocacy, so assessing barriers and to learning through implementation and strategies. Uh, we'll introduce you to the world of learner's wheel and move at the end toward autonomy and self-advocacy as a lifelong learner. Uh, Lamar College, it's a little background here, has uh, been open since 1985. Uh, we have about 500 students at the top number um, of all disabilities, as you can see. Uh, we have an average of 40 to 50 percent transfer students from other colleges, and our ratio student to teacher is six to one. Um, and there's a whole list of four-year, our two- and four-year programs that we offer here at Landmark. We'd like to start off talking about uh, student behavior and language that we recognize uh, within the student of adverse population that we work with here at Landmark. Hmm. So, Sophie, what are some of the common behaviors that you see interfering with students' self-advocacy skills. So some of the primary behaviors that many of us here at Landmark College experience 
experience in the classroom, in coaching sessions, in office hour appointments, in advising sessions, in counseling sessions, in working with our at-risk population can include, for example, um, ineffective executive functioning skills and strategies. Um, these behaviors, of course, interfere greatly with students' ability to meet their academic potential and even to get to the place where they understand how to self-advocate for themselves. So students like this are often late to class, they often miss appointments, they often don't have needed materials. I'm sure that this is resonating with many of you out there. Um, we, of course, also have students with a more externalized locus of control, um, students who have not yet um, sort of uh, uh, internalized um, their own sort of sense of self-determination and agency. Um, and of course, the more external the locus of control, the less likely students are to ask for help and to understand on a deep level um, where, what, where they are and what barriers they may be um, experiencing and where they need to move and, and how to create steps in between those two things. And of course, um, the elephant in the room in higher ed right now is certainly in the room at Landmark, which is anxiety. We, like many other higher ed institutions, are experiencing very high levels of students with anxiety disorders, panic disorders, uh, you know, stress. Um, and these are certainly um, behaviors that, again, are um, creating barriers for students to be able to begin to understand how to how to advocate for themselves. Would you add to that list at all, Dottie, in terms of common behaviors that you see in the classroom? Uh, I think that anxiety is uh, central at this point, and some of the skills often lead to anxiety. It's usually starting at the stress level and then compounding uh, their performance by higher levels of anxiety is certainly what I see. Yeah, we're going to talk more when we get to our world of learners wheel um, about this domain, the domain of social and emotional influences. And again, the elephant in the room in higher ed. And um, many teachers don't necessarily right now see this as their responsibility, but Dottie and I are gonna be advocating that really um, professionals who work with at-risk populations really do have a responsibility to address some of the issues related to anxiety as it manifests towards learning in mm -hmm. particular, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So in order to give you an overview of where the information has arisen from, uh, that we speak about today. I'd like to just show you a timeline of some of the research developments uh, that we have experienced here at Landmark uh, through action research in our classrooms. So uh, 2009 original research was done uh, that looked at student engagement and uh, what were the barriers that were interfering with student engagement in our classes on our campus. Um, and from that original research, we teased out four distinct domains of learning um, that we delve into uh, more specifically to find out what the research was in each one of those four domains. Uh, following that, in 2012, our research uh, led us to uh, design, explicitly designed instruction that would address more than academic skills uh, without sacrificing content. Um, and from there, we developed uh, the image you will soon see, uh, which we call the World of Learners Wheel. Um, we have since integrated this theory and practice into our first year of programming. Um, so all first year students to Landmark will experience um, the four domains of learning as they are building their self-awareness and self-advocacy skills here. Um, we went back to those students and queried them to see how they, how they understand and how they felt about the material we were showing them. And you can see by their responses that they felt like the information was very valuable or at least moderately valuable for them. Um, which was important information as we as we worked with students to build on the initial research that we did. 
Uh, so currently, um, our education department is um, integrating uh, all of this material that you see into our classrooms, and we are working to integrate it also into our advisor program. So we want to talk about how we help students assess behaviors using the four domains of learning as a framework for both their understanding and common language. So just so that we all have a shared uh, vocabulary, uh, the four domains that Dottie and I teased out from our original research um, are the following, motivation, social emotional influences, self-regulation, and academic skill attainment. Um, academic skill attainment, of course, is the one that most uh, teachers and pro professionals working directly with students feel most comfortable with. This is what we went to school to do, to support students academically. Um, Dottie and I, though, are promoting the thesis that there are three other really important domains that all students, not just students with learning disabilities and not just at-risk learners, but actually all students um, need to have some adequate control over in order to advocate for themselves and therefore meet their academic potential. And this is particularly critical for incoming freshmen to college, and we would like to promote the, uh, the growth of some of this awareness and skill development prior to actually entering college for the first time. Right. So we work with high school teachers. We work with um, even elementary school teachers. And the earlier that students can understand that learning is complicated, that meeting your potential as a student is complicated. It's not just showing up for class and doing your homework, which I think is sort of the, the cultural standard when we think of what it takes to meet your academic potential. But in fact, students need to have some adequate control in terms of their self-regulation, which is their awareness, understanding, and monitoring of executive functioning skills. They need to have some adequate control over their motivation. This is a big one, of course, for um, many of our students at Landmark. Um, <clears throat> comprehending the meaning of concepts, seeing their relevance within a larger context, and setting realistic goals. And we're going to get back to this idea of goal setting. Um, certainly it fits in very closely with self-advocacy. Um, uh, you know, you need to have goals forefront in your mind to move through school, to move through life, to understand where and when to advocate for yourself. So actually in the education department here at Landmark, we work directly with students on goal setting, and that work is now coming out of this four domains framework. And finally, the social emotional influences we had discussed anxiety earlier. Certainly students need to have some adequate control over their own awareness and management of their emotional triggers and their ability to manage stress. And what we're talking about here today is um, management of emotional triggers specifically around learning situations, around the academic environment. Because one thing Dottie and I have learned through our many years at Landmark College is simply that learning is emotional. There is an absolutely emotional component to learning. And if you take an at-risk population, um, that is even more magnified. I'd like to also um, it highlight the fact that the four domains are interconnected and they are interrelated and we'll show that relationship as we move along. And as Sophie said, adequate control. I'd also like to highlight because we are not looking for perfection in any one of these domains. Um, we're just talking about the ability and the skills to monitor and maintain levels of competence in each of these four domains. Let's look together for a moment at what we call the success attributes. These are the observable attributes which uh, we have put into the categories of the four domains, but clearly um, all of these characteristics do move between domains. They don't necessarily fit beautifully into each box. But as we went back and looked at the research, we looked at Brooks, Ames and Ames, Richard J. Davidson, Sharon Begley, um, Zimmerman, Rady, and others, 
you know, we we didn't want, we didn't need to reinvent the wheel, right? We're we're creating the do the four domains framework, and we're creating a comprehensive model, but it is including the work of many others as well. Um, and so here you can see the at observable attributes within the four domains that we work with our students towards achieving, right? We would like students to begin to understand what a student who's meeting his or her academic potential is doing, that within motivation, they are creating long and short range goals, that they're ex establishing expectations, they're persevering, they're flexible, right? And you can read these other categories. Um, social emotional development is really important. Again, awareness of triggers, resilience, and we work quite a bit with students on the concept of resilience and growth mindset. Um, so it's important to understand, though, that this is not what we hear from our students. We don't have our at-risk students coming to office hours or coming up to us after class and saying, um, I'm having a very difficult time establishing routines and maintaining my physical and emotional well-being, right? <laughs> Often what we see, rather, um, are behaviors, um, students who may appear passive or resistant or angry, um, or lacking buy-in, um, those are those are very common behaviors that we as professionals might look at and be able to place into a domain in terms of a barrier that a student may be experiencing. Also, very commonly, we hear language from our students, and many of you work on some level with students who are at risk as learners, and so some of this language should look pretty familiar to you, right? Um, any kinds of words that involve an emotional aspect such as hate, right? I hate this stupid assignment. Right away, you can understand that that is a social emotional domain issue for the student, right? They may be actually intellectually very capable of doing the assignment. The, the problem may not be within the academic skill realm but they come to the support center and they say, I hate this stupid assignment. I don't know why I have to do it. And I'm not very good at dot, dot, dot. That gives the professional working with the student a reference point for understanding probably some of the better ways to approach helping the student rather than jumping right into the academic realm. You wanna add anything, Dottie? Um, I think that it's important to be able to translate some of the information we gather from students and their performance in class and be able to really help them identify uh, the source of what's going on. And we see it uh, show up in the academic realm, but it could very, very well be um, a motivational issue or a self-regulation. And um, once there's a deeper understanding, both from the professional and the student's perspective, then it's much easier to address these and begin to sort of unpack strategies and what to do about these. But of course, the first step is always going to be self-awareness and helping students to become aware of what are their barriers within these domains? What are they typically uh, tripped up with day to day, what what affects the majority of their life, um, and that's a great place to start with this. Right, because no student and no person is instantly uh, good self good at self advocacy. It really starts at the most basic level with noticing behavior, noticing language, and as professionals working with these students we can really support them with this very basic step of first just noticing. So if a student comes to the support center and says, I hate this stupid assignment, right? What you don't need to do in that moment necessarily is say, okay, so let us let me teach you how to write an outline, right? What you need to do is to engage with the student perhaps to ask a few questions about why they're um, engaging with the assignment with stretch, such strong language about it and, and where that might be coming from. And and why are they feeling that way? Why, what right. is behind that feeling that they're bringing forward mm -hmm. uh, that's really impacting their performance, their ability to do that work? If you can notice that the four domains in this image, they're very neatly packaged 
in four different quadrants. Um, in this next image, you'll see we the quadrants and place them within a circle. And we did this for several reasons. Uh, primarily, we wanted students to begin to understand that all of these four domains are interrelated and interconnected. Um, and if you are struggling with motivation, then chances are the longer that um, that struggle continues, you're probably going to get more and more anxious about it. Some students might get even more volatile um, because they start acting out those emotions. Um, and obviously, that's going to affect their academic performance. Um, so the inner ring, as you see in this particular image, are uh, provide students with language that describes their feelings, their behaviors. And that's important as a starting point because many individual students, even at the adult level, don't always have the language to identify what it is that they're experiencing um, moment to moment. And as we move through the wheel, um, one of the most important things um, that we have found using it um, here at Landmark and, and teachers in other classrooms are using it around the country is um, the importance of shared language. So shared language among stakeholders, um, shared language between professors and students, shared language between advisors and students, between advisors and professors, even between parents and professors and students. So once the language um, is used in a way that supports the student by all of the people helping to support that student, um, then uh, it really begins to feel like there's a, a team effort at play. And the language is not um, in isolation in our first year programming. We, they are reading uh, the research that coincides with the behaviors within uh, each of these domains. So they're getting familiar with what these terms mean and how they place themselves, what that means for barriers to learning. Um, in the outer ring, as you see, um, you will see the positive attributes. And the other reason why we produced uh, the four domains in a wheel is to indicate movement so that we aren't only focused on the negative behaviors. We're, we're trying to help students understand the positive nature of uh, where they want to be within those uh, four domains. And um, the grayed out circle in the middle becomes very important to them at the end as they build self-advocacy skills. Um, so you can take a student from feeling anxious to feeling more competent. And the real question that we pose to students is, how do I get there? How do I move? And that's the whole point of their self-advocacy growth that we're uh, trying to help them through. So to begin with, we provide uh, very specific and very different strategies for each one of these um, attributes that will give them a toolbox in which they can um, look back to if they're struggling. If they don't have a, a routine, they're struggling to get organized. Um, they can look at this and begin to figure out what action is possible that would um, help them move away from that barrier and begin to enter a more uh, level of competence. And, and when we start working with students with this wheel, um, we work with it in groups in class, we work with it in small and large groups, um, advisors can work with it one-on-one, -on -one. certainly professors can work with it one-on-one -on -one in an office hour appointment. Um, we, we always start with the, uh, the question, in which areas do you feel that you have adequate control right now? So we start with where students feel that they are in control, that they, they, we look at the, we ask them to look at the outer ring first. We do not start with the inner ring barriers. And we ask students to identify several areas. It can be several areas within one domain or it can be several domains, but several areas in which students feel, you know, I've got this right now. I'm actually personally invested. Um, and I'm a very reliable student, um, and I actually have pretty good self-regulation skills, right? Start there, ask them what they're doing right, 
And then we ask them to identify one or two, never more than the number of success attributes that they feel are in control, but just identify one or two areas for further development. Look to the inner ring and identify one or two areas that you feel might be a barrier for you in terms of your self-advocacy and your ability to meet your academic potential right now. And we usually talk about those as primary barriers. You know, we all have small barriers, but I try to help students to really look at, of those small barriers, which do you think is affecting more than one domain mm -hmm. that's really impacting your performance? I also, uh, I also try to help students realize they shouldn't make up barriers that aren't there. Um, but by seeing the whole wheel, when things begin to unravel, um, unexpectedly it provides um, opportunities for them to go back to the wheel to figure out what they could do in areas that they usually have control over. They may not have strategies because they usually have that mm -hmm. under control. Again, language can go from, uh, this is providing students with language. So students who are typ typically saying, I'm just not very good at, we can ask them now to identify exactly which domain they're experiencing that frustration and, and provide them with some language. So I'm not very good at can become, well, um, I notice that I am disorganized in these certain situations. And last point on the wheel, and then we do have to move on um, in the interest of time, is um, that students I just lost my train of thought. I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> We're going to move on in the interest of time. Now addressing. We've noticed student behaviors, right? We've shared noticing that with students if, if we're in a position to do so. We as professionals have assessed those behaviors using the framework of the four domains. And we're now going to talk briefly about how to address those barriers of learning to learning through implementation of strategies. And Patty is going to take you through this fabulous goal setting work that she developed. So in order to help students uh, focus on particular goals, one or two areas of real concern, we would start uh, the, the sample that you're looking at on the screen provides drop down menus so the students can still using the same language of the, of the domains choose areas of challenge um, and keep those in check and I try to tell students to only select three, uh, three or less actually is more is preferable so they're no, not overwhelmed. Once they have made their selection on the top they would move down to the bottom and actually try to prioritize and this is where the primary barrier comes into play. A discussion about well which, which one of these challenges is really affecting most uh, it, most things that you do. Um, and there, I would have them identify those three barriers in priority list and then choose some actions. And the actions are listed on the side. Again, these are drop down menus for students to identify. Um, and then uh, we don't stop there. We ask them to identify those actions and then identify possible obstacles that may get in the way of um, implementing the strategies that they chose. So they have to have a second layer of strategy. So if they wanted to uh, go to office hours to take care of one of their challenges, but um, they, their um, anxiety and fear may get in the way, I would ask them to come up with another strategy that helps reduce them and one Example might be to make an appointment because most students feel like an appointment would get them there um, over a free uh, choice, um, unidentified time. Um, and lastly, very quickly, we take through the uh, the habit loop, which is part of Charles Duhigg's. Um, the habit loop. If you've read his book or know his work. Um, and here we're asking students to really look at what is the routine that they're going to produce um, in order to achieve that goal. And in order to understand the new routine, they first have to identify what's happening. What is, what is going wrong? 
or what is the current routine that may not be helpful, and then how can they shift that routine? So finally, the goal right, for all of us working with students, certainly <coughs> students who are at risk in college, is of course autonomy and self-advocacy as a lifelong learner. We do believe that the goals work in particular, helping students tap into goals for themselves, which we do at the first year level here throughout this first year course that Dottie and I and others teach. Um, really support students in terms of set making, creating action plans. Um, it supports them in terms of working with their advisors, selecting classes, selecting teachers um, to, that will benefit their learning style, and moving forward in an autonomous um, way as a lifelong learner. We didn't have much time with you today. Uh, we're sorry if this felt a little bit rushed. Um, we will invite you to come to our website in a moment. We wanted to end with a student testimonial. This particular student discussing our four domains said, I find the framework to be very accurate. In my opinion and experiences, the four domains do a good job of encompassing students. I see myself as a learner in academics the most. But all four of the domains apply to me. Everything comes back to the academics for me. And here you see them now working within the framework when the student writes, I find my strongest domain to be motivation. I have lots of motivation to be here at Landmark and want to be successful. My motivation is to keep my RA job, join PTK, stay eligible for sports and get a transfer scholarship. The biggest challenges are emotional influences. With my goals, taking 16 credits, being an RA and playing two sports, I feel stressed to finish work and sometimes struggle with the amount I have to do. So this is an example of a student who has worked within the framework, has identified strengths, identified challenges, has create, has talked about his goals for himself, um, and understands what he needs to do in terms of the stress that he may feel to finish work and struggling with the amount that he has to do. So again, the language comes to the forefront in terms of really digging in and understanding oneself as a learner, the ultimate sort of self-advocacy for uh, learners who are at risk. And finally, just to conclude, we want to thank you very much for your time today. We hope this information has been useful and thought-provoking. Please do visit our website shown here for more information about our Four Domains Framework. Um, as well as on that website, we have a new 30-minute video of ourselves um, discussing more in-depth um, the world of learner's wheel. So if this seemed like a tease, which it kind of was, because it was very quick, uh, we encourage you to go to our website and you can actually watch us discussing the world of learner's wheel in depth. Um, so there's a contact page on our website, which we encourage you to get in touch. Um, after you've looked at all the stuff on the website, we would love to hear from you with questions, comments, um, share interesting ways that you've used our framework and, and our materials. We'd love to hear about that. Um, and you can for sure email one or both of us at the landmark emails provided here. Um, and I think that now we actually have a few minutes left over for any questions that people may have. Okay, great. Dottie and Sophie, thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. I'm going to go ahead and pull the screen back here. If you do have a question uh, for Dottie or Sophie, please feel free to submit your question now through that questions box of GoToWebinar. We'll do some live Q&A here in just a couple of moments. This webinar has been brought to you free today thanks to our sponsor, Landmark College. Landmark College, a global leader of integrated teaching methods for students with dyslexia and other learning disabilities, ADHD, ASD, offers associate and bachelor's degrees, bridge semesters, and summer programs for high school and visiting college students. Students, faculty, and other professionals from all over the world are drawn to Landmark College for its innovative educational model, which has been developed over three decades of working with students who learn differently. Now, Landmark College's curriculum, designed for students to master academic skills and strategies in a way that builds from semester to semester, helps them become confident, self-empowered, and independently successful learners. Also want to take a moment to pop back into the teacher learning community, share with you where you can find some additional resources and find this um, on-demand webinar recording and um, will be available for you all in 48 hours. 
inside of our course catalog, a great place to start would be uh, underneath our category here for response to intervention. Great place to start. Also scrolling down a little bit further here to our special education category. So that's where you can find some additional resources and that on-demand webinar recording will be available for you all in 48 hours. Okay, ladies, let's see here. I've got your contact information up here on my screen. Did have a couple of questions come in for you all. Mylene is asking, would you modify any of the language for a middle school setting? That is a great, great question, Mylene. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, we have actually had, um, we have actually presented this material to elementary school teachers. Um, and uh, we do know that teachers are working in the classroom with this material um, at that age. Um, so what do you think, Dottie? Would you, would you? I would definitely define the terms that are here yeah. um, and simplify where necessary, mm -hmm. for, depending on the uh, comprehension level of the student and the, the handle on vocabulary. Yeah. Um, but uh, the terms, as they get older, certainly the terms are terms that they're going to see in the research. So it's not a bad thing to be sort of introduced to that language. I might, Gray, I might, um, Mylene, I might actually use the, the, the example with the grayed out inner ring. Mm -hmm. And I might, um, if I were you, I might actually use different language potentially that, that's more befitting your age group in terms of the kinds of actions that they can take. Um, rather than changing the success, success attributes or the barriers, I might actually work a little bit differently in, within the inner ring, if that makes sense. <coughs> okay, great. Thank great you question. So much. Um, next question came in from Doris. Is what do you um, do? You also address students with Aspergers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great question, Doris. <laughs> yes. Here at Landmark, we have um, we have a an increasing. Lee, um, a, a increasing population of students on the autism spectrum. I believe that year over year we have um, more and more numbers of students who fit that profile here. Um, I, I have anywhere from three to four in any given classroom. So yes, we do. And actually we have um, used our framework with great success with students on the spectrum. Um, you just had, you've only seen a tiny bit of what we do. You've really only had the overview here, but we have a lot of manipulatives and other materials that we use with our students. I, I'd also like to add that we do, we spend a lot of time on the social emotional realm with students on the spectrum. And we also have uh, explicitly designed instruction that actually feed into some of the challenges these students have in classroom activities, such as group discussions, for instance. That's a really big part of our instructional level uh, so that we can help students not avoid those situations, but build skills in those situations. Okay, great question. Great. great. Adora said, thank you. I will definitely visit your site for more information. And do get in touch, please. <laughs> okay, great, ladies. Thank you again for a wonderful presentation. It has been a pleasure being here with both of you today. I look forward to being here with you again for your future sessions. Thank you so much. Thank it's been you. a pleasure. Thanks again.